What's the power level of your data platform? We're going to go through a variety of different architectures and see where yours fits in. And we'll represent power level the only way we can. Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! With Goku from Dragon Ball Z. Pretty much every analytics operation starts the same way, with an Excel file. Then another, and then another. Until someone wants data across a few different files, so someone gets to copy and paste for a living. We call this human automation. Hopefully, we don't stay here for long. Now we might be able to get a nice database and some sort of ETL tool to get all of our files and put them together. Probably something along the lines of SSIS, Talend, or Informatica. We can get some decent automation with this, but it might be limited with complex operations. It will also require some cost for servers and tools. So now we're going to start writing some Python scripts to give us more exact control over our operations, scheduling them with cron jobs. But without any kind of orchestrator, we'll have to deal with a bunch of independent and isolated jobs loading in numerous files on their own with limited ability to handle rollbacks or ordered operations. Our platform now has reliable data storage and automated ETL capable of handling what we need it to. But we've been focused at the team level. Usually at this point, the growing data team zooms out to look at the organizational data, and it's not great. It turns out there's been a distributed approach to analytics, with each team building their own solution. Bonus pain points if you work somewhere that loves to acquire other companies. At this point, it becomes a whole effort to track down all the various data movement going on, documenting it, and organizing it into a cohesive platform, potentially reworking all of it into the preferred method. So now we've got our strategy in place loading files, but what about streaming our transactional data? Next, we want to implement some streaming approaches like Apache Kafka. The platform can now handle transactional data being streamed when possible and batch loading files that are provided. We've definitely added an orchestrator at this point to coordinate the many avenues of processing going on here. This level also has containerized our work with Python, Airflow, Kafka, and whatever else we've used to achieve this. We'll run into endless versioning and library dependencies on deployment without using Docker, Kubernetes, or similar approaches. Next, we're going to the cloud with serverless compute options. Some might argue that containers is the higher level since you have complete control over your servers, but I don't like dealing with servers, so I'm on team cloud, and this is my list. Our serverless cloud architecture will look very similar to containerized architecture, just with the tools available on our platform of choice. They all provide similar tools, some sort of serverless scripting, streaming queues, batch loading, orchestrators, and now we can upgrade our database to a massive parallel processing data warehouse solution. Okay, so now we have a solid platform, cloud-based, multiple pipeline routes, data warehousing solution, orchestration, monitoring, alerting. This is where we get to have some fun. We can add a data lake or other form of HDFS file store. This gives us options for massive data storage, exploration on that, and maintaining our warehouse solution for reporting. This level is where data science and machine learning can really get going. But for really large scale analytics, we'll need to move into Spark or Databricks. By moving our Python scripts into PySpark and utilizing the Spark engine, we can really fill out our data lake with tons of data. And for our final form, we have our cloud-based platform using batch and streaming pipelines to ingest data on a Spark platform, the data lands in our data lake, our machine learning and data science projects can work off of that, while a subset of essential data is loaded into our data warehouse, where it's modeled for query optimization, and then a reporting layer is added for business-friendly usage and security controls, allowing for the self-serving of data for reporting. It's fun to look at all the variations of architectures, but unlike Goku, the power levels aren't always straightforward. An ETL tool might be more preferable to isolated Python scripts, if that fits your needs. Spark is designed for heavy data loads, and it might not provide any value for the additional costs if you're working with smaller data sets. Having a data lake and a data warehouse might be overkill for what you need, but you always want to be analyzing what you're working with and what could be done differently. And to help with that, you want to watch this video on diagrams so you can visualize where you're at and where you'd like to be.